Well, I hope you'll find this video interesting. I haven't found anything metal detecting in the last few months since I found that nice gold coin. So, this time I'm going to show you how I built a first rate, second generation image intensifier starlight scope using this tube from a, an old tank site which uh, presumably come from a Centurion tank. It is a, an image intensifier tube which as you can see there serial number XX1332 which was made in the 80s by a company which is now defunct uh, called Mullard. This is uh, this may be a bit old, but this has got certain advantages over the earlier uh, device that I made. In that, if you look here, it's got about a 40 mil input window, and if I remove this on the back, the the plate which come. Well, let me just pull that off. There you go. It protects the screen. It comes in that from the manufacturers, but as you can see, the screen is quite large as well. This means that. Uh, to make a first-rate starlight scope, you, you do need to use camera lenses, really, because you can get fast lens fitted to the front, and then you use an eyepiece on the back there. And the power supply for this, it's got an internal HT supply. On the top, you see the two terminals, plus and minus. That is for your 6-volt battery. Uh, 4A cells work quite well. To make this baby work... <clears throat> You need to get yourself like a little bush to, uh, to create the correct focal length for the input window. And then you can uh, use a variety of lenses, which I have here. The one I used on the original Starlight in the other video was this X-Infrared Periscope. Uh, it's about a 60mm F104. Uh, first rate British lens designed mainly for the infrared spectrum, you can just simply that simply just screws into that bush there and you can just bomb that onto the face of that tube and mount the eyepiece on the back which uh, this one here used on the uh, practice model as it were this is a symmetrical eyepiece that can be used for astronomy but when you mount it with a bush on the back end of the tube, it produces a 40 uh, degree viewing of the screen, which uh, creates excellent night vision. But these tubes are really, you know, they might be 30 years old, but they're fantastic in their operation. And I'm now going to show you the, the complete model, which I, uh, I've i just been... <clears throat> I've just been chopping up this old telescope here. Uh, it's a bit of a cheapy old telescope, uh, as I say. Uh, I thought well, the actual cylinder and the end plates would come in handy to mount an image intensifier unit. And uh, I think the end result is amazing. Like just to say, the end cap uh, is the mirror out of the telescope. And the end cap actually fitted my old starlight eyepiece perfectly. I'm just going to show you now. I'm just going to clear these out of the way a little bit. This is the end result. This is like quite a professional job actually. If you look, <clears throat> I'm using the eyepiece unit that I used on the uh, free stage unit on the other video. This eyepiece fits wonderfully in the back where the mirror used to sit in the telescope. Uh, it fits a treat actually. It's uh, obtained on eBay from a company called Art in Park from Israel so it come a long way and um, for a few extra pounds I actually obtained the original rubber housing which uh, the snipers used to use Obviously they didn't want to, with the glowing tube there, they didn't want to give away their position, so they use these rubber eyepieces. And I think if you, when you screw it back on there, it really looks the business. And uh, as you see, there's the, that's where the mirror housing on the telescope used to be. It looks quite professional. There's just enough room with the tube fitted inside to mount the switch, which I won't do now, because uh, although I've got... Uh, 
uh, the end cap fitted on the lens. I uh, won't do it in one is too light. I re-drilled everything so that I can uh, fit it on the original tripod, which I think was uh, you know, it's called Phase. It was a really cheap and nasty telescope, but but no, he looks pretty good. On the front there, I fitted rather than have this fixed focus lens that I used on the um, the other model, I've decided and I've elected to use this 50 mil f1. Point four, which will work in down to starlight conditions. You need the minimum of f1.8, really. Ideally, if you can get them, the 50 mil uh, standard lens f1.2, which is near the Noctilux lenses, they will work a little better, but they're a lot heavier. Uh, as I switched them off, I'll uh, let you see. There's this was the dust cap from the telescope, and I just drilled him and bored him out. So that I could fit internally one of these, and I've just fitted a th the M35 mount so that I can uh, replace the lens if I wish. But this one works brilliantly. Say so it's from the 60s, also obtained on eBay. And if you look, <clears throat> the optics on it perfect. Uh, Yashica, uh, but I think it cost me about sixty-five pounds on on eBay. Uh, the lens, lens is flawless, and there you are. I think it really looks quite professional. <clears throat> to say the eyepiece uh, is about 1970 from a from an original AN PVS2 American Starlight scope, which uh, obviously the Israelis bought after the Americans uh, finished with them, and um, a 1971. Uh, fast lens from a 35mm camera, so it's all available on eBay. I bought these tubes on eBay for I bought three of them from a company, so it just uh, squeezes in there quite nicely. <laughs> I got a couple of these, which uh, I can always always comes in rather handy, and um, I bought these three of them on eBay for untested. From a company, they they said they didn't have the facilities to test them, which I couldn't understand because you only had to connect a uh, six volt supply, and then they start whistling, and then they obviously light up really well. But this one uh, particular one I'm holding me on does not work, so uh, I can be discarded straight in the bin. But it's just being used here as the um, to show you basically the working tube, and that fortunately one of them out of the three did work. Uh, only had a slight screen burn off center of the viewing screen, but when you fit the starlight um, scopes eyepiece, uh, the the burn, which was probably just off, like well, really virtually out of the viewing screen, doesn't show at all. But I'm now going to demonstrate it, and I think you'll agree that it really is, you know, for an old bit of kit, these old image intensifier tubes work really well. Huh. As I say, I hope I, uh, <laughs> I hope they don't want the telescope back because I well and truly buggered that up. But um, I hope you know it looks. I've got the added advantage that I just reboard these and I can actually use the original tripod if you sort of like fit in there. Uh, give it a little bit of a push down. There you go. Actually, it balances rather well, and you can actually use that in the field. Oh, I think it looks rather nice. Anyway, we'll take them out in the dark and give them a, give them a blast. And I, I think you'll agree that it works really surprisingly well. Bear with us. Good idea how well the night sight's actually working out in this field. You can see you don't get hardly any streaking in the tube. See the old uh, children's playground there. And you can scan right across the field. You can see the whole field. You've got like a practically a uh, faultless image there. I'm shooting through my iPod. As you can see, street lights cause a little bit of overexposure, but with that fast lens on the front there, you get a massive gain. The old channel plate multiplier is using uh, on this old tank site is giving you probably about 80,000 light gain. Pretty amazing, eh? Better clear off before I get mugged. <laughs>